produce in a day, the same amount of data that we used to produce in 10 years. So inside of some of those things is a story. We do a lot of research groups as well, but people often tell you something that they think you want to hear. But the data points are kind of telling you what's reality. So sometimes you can put those together and create an insight that really relates to people, you know, and connects to their lives. Stories can come from numbers. You know, I noticed one day I was out at the park and I was looking around. There was a gay family over here. There's a mixed family over here. There's a completely tattooed, covered family over here. And I'm like, families look different today. You know, they've changed. And we use data to confirm that, to say, okay, actually, it turns out that only 48% of families today are two kids, two parents, etc. And that's very different from 20 years ago. So that confirmed that. So we made this big campaign. And when we put them out there in the world, a lot of people sent us angry emails and angry letters and angry Facebook posts. And we actually took all of the hate mail we got and we printed them out and we made the word love out of all of the hate messages. So literally, there was all the data points, you know, from people. But then it turned out that we actually got more positive messages about our campaign than negative. And so we filled all the space around the word love with all of the positive messages. So you actually basically had a data visualization of how America feels about this subject in one artistic piece. What's the limit of data? What can it do and what can it not do? And a piece of data on its own, a stat on its own, is going to do very little. I guess I look at it as a starting point. And once you have that, it can back up your idea, but it can never be the idea. The potential for data in a word, human.